Hi, everyone. This is Kimmy with um, the Munch Bunch podcast, and we are with Megan Van Noy, my amazing Hello. co-host. <laughs> and we're like giddy as all heck because we have <laughs> Dr. Felix Seau. He's one of our very favorite airway dentists and educators. So here's Dr. Liao. This is our starstruck moment. <laughs> <laughs> Kimmy has, like Dr. Liao, when we started this podcast, you were like the first guest that Kimmy wanted to have. So we've been looking forward to this uh, for quite some time now. So we're glad that this all came thank you. together. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Delighted to join you all. So, Dr. Liao, will you give us just a little bit of a background on you? Um, talk to us about, you know, your the books that you have written. Give us a little bit of your background, and then we'll we'll start picking your brain. Okay. All right. So, what I noticed is that uh, dentists do teeth, and medical doctors do mind and body, but the mouth is left out. I mean, look at all the major medical centers you've ever been to or have heard of. There's a department for every part of human body. There's this doctor for every part except the mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever seen the department of the mouth in any medical center? <laughs> no. <laughs> and, you know, your moms and you can tell, you know, the mouth is life, right? How do we grow when we're first born? Mm -hmm. we go Bed, we fall asleep, we wake up, we repeat the cycle, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's how we grow. <laughs> and so the mouth is to humans what roots are to plants. So that is the first sentence in my latest book that was released in January this year, because I wanted to bring the mouth back where it belongs in the care of health in the human body, right? You are what you eat, to say the least, but you also, how you breathe and how well you sleep, right? So the mouth plays a part in all of these, and I feel that that's missing. So the first book I wrote is called Six Foot Tiger, Three Foot Cage. That's so what I <laughs> my all-time favorites. I recommend it to everyone because mm -hmm. it yeah. makes it so, it's like a light bulb moment. You're like, of course yeah. that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens when the jaw's too small and not enough uh, space is given to the tongue? You pay the price of airway obstruction and hypoxia or low oxygen. And that's how it leads to high blood pressure and depression, anxiety, never mind teeth grinding and brain fog, and eventually Alzheimer's. So there's all kinds of health risks that come from something that, you know, dentists just don't pay attention to and medical doctors don't either. In fact, they're more, even more curious, right? Because they don't look in the mouth every day. Right. So I have lots of doctors who say to me after the lecture, you know, I know I'm supposed to look inside the patient's mouth. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be looking for, right? Because they're victims of their medical education that leaves mm -hmm. out the mouth. Yeah, they're so like, this, there's the tongue, there's some teeth. What else is yeah. there? <laughs> that's that. right? You choose with your teeth and that's that. Mm -hmm. So the second one is about our early silence. What are the clues that you can find in the mouth and around the mouth? that uh, tells that uh, the patient is on a downhill slide towards sleep apnea and degeneration. And yeah. it turns out there's a lot, and most of it centers around what the dental uh, health professionals can do, which is to recognize teeth grinding not as a malocclusion problem, but as a airway obstruction during sleep. Mm -hmm. That's how I got into airway sleep medicines, it didn't make sense to me why the body would mutilate the hardest tissue it has. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't do that to its own knees, right? Unless it's driven by some masochist, right? Yeah. But very few of us want to be masochist to our teeth, right? <laughs> so why would that happen, right? So I, had, I figured it had to be a, for a higher cost because the body wouldn't sacrifice any part of itself. Right. Well, 35 years later, when all the pieces of the puzzles come into place, 
Now we go, aha. It's because the body's doing CPR during sleep and the teeth are in the way. So when you had to choose between oxygen for the brain and the heart and preserving your teeth, what are you going to choose? Right. The oxygen. Get the teeth out of the way, right? <laughs> Give me the oxygen. Yeah. yeah. Got yeah. to breathe. Right. Right. Got to breathe. And the third book really um, combines um, how to eat with how to own and operate your mouth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people, they have double chin and they have pot belly, so they have worse aggravated um, airway obstruction. So they have an eight foot tiger in a two foot cage. God forbid if they have bicuspid extraction and the spaces got closed mm -hmm. and you want not write a script that says, you know, when you take out a teeth, you might as well just Make your tongue smaller to fit in this. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> Although well, some have... ENTs do do that, where they just trim the tongue down and it's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Can you even imagine going through that? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we're, so there had to be a big, a better way. Uh, the engineer in me says, how can we do better? And um, it turns out that you need to eat healthy. And if you grow up eating standard American diet in America, working in America, live and breathe this air and drink this water and eat the package and fast food, your jaw is gonna be failing to thrive. That means that the teeth won't have enough bones to line up straight naturally. That means you're gonna to have to go see the orthodontist. That means you're gonna put the rest of your body at risk. Even if, not, if you might end up with straight white teeth. Mm -hmm. That does not qualify your body for health. In fact, it often qualifies the body for upper airway resistance syndrome or sleep apnea. Certainly I've seen lots and lots of cases of head, neck, jaw pain, back pain, that is related to a malocclusion that is skeletal, not just dental. I mean, orthodontically treated teeth, you wouldn't say that they're dental malocclusion, but you would certainly see almost case after case in symptomatic patients that they have skeletal malocclusion that's not consistent with the body's alignment, breathing, circulation principles. And I call it ABC, alignment, breathing, circulation must come before dentistry. So ABC before B. So if Say that again, because it's like a paradigm shift. I yeah. love it. I love it. So good. <laughs> But before you do dentistry, before you do cosmetic dentistry, before you do orthodontics, before you do implants, before you do all in one, God forbid, make sure the patient's airway is wide open and that their jaws are well developed. I mean, when patients come in with muscle reconstruction and I see their airway in the red or the black zone, my heart just sinks for them. Mm -hmm. Four things. Now you have to pay three times the original cost. Yeah, and yeah. that that makes it so hard. And actually, I'm like the perfect example of perfect straight teeth. Yeah. My parents paid lots of money, and I'm you know I've got about I'm narrow this way, I'm narrow this yeah. way, and I'm about nine millimeters back this way, and I have positional yeah. related upper air yeah. resistance syndrome. So, okay. yep. And I know Kimmy's been a victim of uh, premolar extractions as well. So we we're kind of on both sides of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, we and get again, it. Straight. Mm -hmm. yep. Very straight. Very straight. <laughs> but I'm but I'm the <laughs> My airway sucks. <laughs> Very white teeth, miserable patient owner. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right. not tonight because I don't know why, but I just don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you know, you can't blame them. But at least now we know why. Yeah, yeah. And the solution for it, here's the great news. 
no matter what your age is, as long as you have sound natural teeth, we can redevelop your jaws and your face. And can you explain why that is, Dr. Liao? We get a lot yeah. of questions about adult expansion, creating more things, bringing the face forward. And, you know, some people think it's not possible and some people do. Yeah. So the people who think that it's not possible are still in that world in which the earth is flat. When the earth is no longer flat, it changes everything in navigation. That means that when you go west, when you keep going west, you end up in the same spot as opposed to falling off the edge of the earth, okay? So when you believe that when you're old, you cannot reclaim your hell, uh, you're in the world this flat paradigm. Mm -hmm. You know, 20 years ago, no adults were, were wearing braces, right? Today, every other one is wearing braces. I mean, clearly, old concepts die hard, but they do fall by the wayside, the way of the horse and buggies, right? So we have seen it time and time again, that's beyond a doubt that you can regrow jaws uh, with epigenetic appliances, okay? So it's very important to understand what epigenetic means. Epi means in addition to or on top of, like the epidermis, okay? Epi means something on top of or in addition to your genes, okay? Double helix DNA, okay, that you inherit from your parents. So I cannot turn you into your, uh, into Julia Roberts, but I can turn, you into the best version of yourself that's encoded in your double helix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how is that possible? It turns out that there are stem cells that lay dormant inside the two sockets and in mid palatal sutures and in the um, TN joint capsules and in the circumaxillary sutures, okay? So you can stretch these and activate them. And um, you can do that by just turning the gear or activating the wire of this thing. But you do not do it the classical orthodontic mode. And that's where all the dentists get stuck. In order to move teeth through bone, you have to Let's say you want to move the tooth in this direction, okay? You have to break down the bone on the front end, okay? And put a force in this direction and then the gap created by this movement behind uh, the direction of the tooth movement gets filled in with them. That's how classical tooth mechanics works. The world is still flat mode. So the epigenetics says we have an original blueprint that we inherited from our parents. Whether you believe in God, uh, creation theory, or the evolution theory, it does not matter. What matters is that this blueprint says that every one of us, just like your little girl here, she should grow to the point where there's enough jawbone for all 32 teeth to line up straight. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the original design, okay? Yeah. I mean, the 12 year molars come out at 12 years old. The wisdom teeth come out around 16 or 18, right? Well, that's when the jaw reaches its maximal growth. And in mm -hmm. boys, it actually grows to 22 or 25. But be that as it may, we should not have to take out teeth at 12 years old in order to make all the teeth fit. So that gets into why the jaws fail to thrive enough so that each tooth does not have enough bone volume around it to line up straight, okay? So in the old days, I mean, teeth won't move into space unless there's 
I won't move into its place unless there's space. So how do they make space? <laughs> they yank out four by cuspids, and now you have all the space you need. Sometimes too much, but you know what? We'll yank the teeth back and next. <laughs> I won't worry about the consequences. And then now, we can't breathe later. <laughs> that's right. And that's not the worst common problem, right? I mean, that's what they did not think of. But now I've seen enough of the patients cases that I can tell you that the worst ones are the bicuspid attraction cases. And worse among them are the surgical cases, okay? Then the next worst ones are the orthodontically treated ones. The one who are untouched are actually easier to treat. At least I don't have to worry about blunted root tips, right? Mm -hmm. So and I don't have TMJ complications nearly as often, okay? And because they're attractive cases, you always, almost always have more TMJ problems. Almost always. I can always. attest to that, like having bicuspid extractions, my jaw pops out of socket, even though it doesn't hurt. That's right. Um, That's right. And I often see in the dental chair, there's always tons of people that have bicuspid extractions that have TMJ, so I can attest right. to that. Right. Mm -hmm. Neck and shoulder and back pain also, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so the epigenetics basically works on the principle that it's possible to grow the jaw enough after your puberty growth spurt as an adult to make enough bone for all the teeth to line up straight. That doesn't mean they'll line up straight. That means we will give each bone an equal, each tooth, I'm sorry, we can give each tooth an equal opportunity to claim the amount of bone that each tooth is entitled to. Okay, now whether it lines up straight or not, that depends on the habit, that depends on how long the tooth has been twisted or tilted. Mm -hmm. Okay, but one thing for sure is that if you don't have enough bone volume, you cannot straighten the teeth. That's why you hear all these horror stories in the old days about Oh, I've been in places three times for eight years. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I thought two and a half years was a long time for me. I can't even I, imagine. <laughs> but here's, here's what we know now is that when you widen the jaw, and I, you know, I'm grateful to Dr. Dave Singh, who did all the research on airway and jaw development. And uh, uh, he has conclusively shown that you can grow maxilla in adults. And he has shown that in the process, you can widen the airway. And now the earth is no longer flat. And people who says that's not possible or doubt that or refute that, they should read this book first and then speak. You don't know, I think it's smarter to do just keep quiet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But don't mouth off of not knowing. <laughs> which book did he write? <laughs> Just for our listeners and for our viewers, which book are you referring to? So Dr. Um, um, Singh has uh, written a new book called Pneumopedics and Cranial Facial Epigenetics. A very scholarly book. Okay. Uh, the original book is called uh, um, um, Epigenetic Orthodontics for Adults. So it addresses the fact that after your growth years, after your teenage years, you can still redevelop jaws, right? So I can tell you that from my experience, yes. And I can reaffirm what my patient will reaffirm. <laughs> the reason why I can say yes, because my patients say so, not because I say so, okay? And if you wanted to see evidence, just go to my Vimeo channel. We got over 60 testimonials there. Yeah, and we so could actually I, put that, we could put that Vimeo link into our, our, our extras so that people can go sure. take a look. Cause I know people love to see before and afters. That's, that's the yeah. best. <laughs> we do the <laughs> so I, I believe, and also I believe in the patient's own words. Uh, no, I tell them, look, if this thing works for you, you have a duty to share your story 
you know, with those people who are standing on the sideline or sitting in ignorance and they say, geez, there is such a thing. Well, if you benefit from this, you need to tell them. And they're happy to share. I had a scoliosis patient who got better from me doing this in collaboration with a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Ooh, which is a thought. big deal, which is a big deal. Yeah. I have scoliosis. I mean, seen yeah. a chiropractor since I was a little kid, like to yeah. cure scoliosis, that's amazing. But yeah. the reason, can you explain to our viewers why that could be possible because of the TMJ spine connection, Doc? Right. So we live in a field of gravity. Just because we don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay. In order to live in gravity, you either have to be upright with a level and square framework, like the screen you saw behind me, it's level and square. Okay, the human frame is built like that, okay? The, the, the levels are the anatomical postural plane, your eyes, the corner of your mouth, your shoulder, your hips, your um, ankles. They all need to be parallel to the floor, okay? And your spine, the long axis needs to be perpendicular to the ground. You go like this, guarantee either you're going to fall, or if you don't fall, some part of you is going to hurt long enough. Okay? So if the anatomical plane in the jaws and the head are off, then the neck has to be off. Now you have scoliosis. Otherwise, you can't hold up in gravity. Like something yeah. has, if we're tilted, let's say we have one leg mm -hmm. short, okay? Yeah. You will list to the short side and you will keep listing until you're flat on your side. Unless your long side is pulling a lot harder. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So that's called compensation. And anytime your bite, your maxilla, your mandible is off, whether it's in the AP side to side direction or um, um, lateral direction, you're gonna pay a price. So many people have low back pain because they have retruded condyles. Free that up and guess what? Low back pain goes away. I had a really interesting case where this um, young mother, kind of like your age, maybe, um, she came in and said, you know, I've had lifelong bad breath, gum disease, TMJ clicking, and I have locked knees. They're so painful. I said, is it locked now? And she said, yeah, it is. I said, okay, here's a tongue blade. I put it right up against the incisal edges of her two central. It's like close on this. Now swing your knee, sitting. Oh, it's not painful anymore. Just like that. It's you so know, crazy. It's so crazy how everything's just so connected. So connected. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. So that's why I advocate the whole health approach. Whole health means we integrate mind, body, mouth together. Like we said earlier, there's no department of the mouth. And when the mouth is missing, guess what? Uh, a lot of these pains just persist because nobody ever looked at skeletal male occlusion as a thorn in the body size or in the soul of the foot that keeps your system from operating the way it should. And that includes not only the airway, but it also includes the postural chain that goes all the way from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet. Does that answer your question, Kimi? Yes, and I actually want to tell a story. So I got to see Dr. Liao speak and he did that on me where he put my retronathic jaw and my jaw pushes back where it should be. And then he had me do this thing where I walk. I could walk straighter. I was more upright. And my arm strength was stronger when he tested me because my bite was in a better neurological position. 
Oh, and he did you. this thing where he, he's like, sit up straight. And I'm like, I am. And he put me back where I should be. And I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Because it was pinching off my airway. <laughs> it's called compensation, right? Bad posture is a compensation for a poor airway. And, you know, breathing is not optional. So your body has to find some way. And the forward, it's actually when you have so much forward head as it is compressed chest, okay? It's retruded chest that makes the head go forward. So yeah, that's, that's so interesting. That's the only way, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only way the body could get enough air hmm. standing up, yeah. And then when that patient falls asleep and everything goes slack, now your airway is even more closed. Do you have a picture, Dr. Liao, of what skeletal malocclusion looks like? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me see. Skeletal malocclusion, the easiest way to look at it is called uh, um, uh, Liao's sign. I see this so often that uh, um, um, I had to give it a name. And since my name ends up with only four letters, it was an easy choice, right? <laughs> you deserve to make your own. <laughs> All right. So let me share this with you here. Uh, can I share screen? Yep, yep I will allow it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. Can you see this? Let me blow this up. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is called Liao sign. If you look at somebody with um, uh, in profile, Mm -hmm. if you, and if you see the upper lip that drops straight down, this maxilla has failed to thrive during development. The reason why this lip is straight down rather than like this at an angle is because it did not grow downward and forward enough. Mm -hmm. So all the bicuspid extraction cases, you'll see this. Mm -hmm. It's even worse if this was curled inward toward the palate side. So you can see that in my next slide here. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So skeletal malocclusion looks in profile like either a flat upper lip or a curled collapsed upper lip. Okay. So this speaks to the AP retruded position of the maxilla. So that's what skeletal malocclusion is. The mm -hmm. other way is the squashed. Okay, so the three foot cage has a low ceiling, right? So in that case, the soft tissue here would collapse. And these people have what I call a duck bill look. Their lip collapses that way, okay? So this patient has some of that. And mm -hmm. those people often will have a very deep chin cleft. Oh. Yeah, okay. And when the maxilla is retreated, the mandible has to retrude in order to fit into the maxilla, and now you have TMJ. Because mm -hmm. everything is just kind of shoved backwards. Yeah, yeah. So skeletal malocclusion often looks like this. It's like everybody on the street. <laughs> and in the airport, and the supermarket. Mm -hmm. yeah. You name it, they got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I and think when this you is a really that, good slide though. So the forward neck, the head yeah. rotating up. Yeah. And then the flat yeah. upper lip. Yeah. And the lips are apart. And they have this thing called a thyromandibular angle. You know, you see beautiful actresses. This part is almost at 90 degrees. Here, I mean, it's like a <laughs> straight line, 180. See that? Mm -hmm. It's like 140, 100. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. so interesting. It should be like this, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these people usually have uh, some very easily recognizable signs. So in this case, you can see the collapse right here. <laughs> the, collapse. the little tiger. <laughs> whenever, somebody's got, whenever somebody's got this choked airway, you know, they can still eat, drink, and talk but they cannot support a head posture, they cannot support airway. And so they'll end up with a lot of these symptoms. 
I just talked to a dentist last night who was 49 years old. And he says, I have just about everything you list there. Yeah. And he's been in practice for, uh, for 14 years. And for so, our for our audio listeners, the list says, um, can't support head and airway, contributes to many medical, dental, and mood symptoms, sleep apnea, chronic pain, adrenal fatigue, teeth grinding, TMJ disorder, tooth fractures, sensitivities, leading cause of death, loss of libido, bone, memory, irritability, hostility, erectile dysfunction, PMS, depression, and anxiety. We call this the most frequent signs uh, and symptoms of impaired mouth syndrome. Mm -hmm. When the mouth is structurally impaired, now that's another way of saying skeletal malocclusion. But Joe and Jane walk in the street, they don't know what skeletal malocclusion means, mm -mm. but they know what an impaired drunk driver is. So I call that an impaired mouth because here is a mouth that cannot do its job, even if it can drink or talk. Yeah, I think that's such a good, good description, impaired mouth syndrome. Um, and I think there's so many people out there, whether or not they're patients or just friends and family who, you know, you could pick probably three of these things off the list right off the bat without even thinking about it. So it's really an epidemic. Yeah, and not only that, there are no good solutions for that. I mean, what, pick any one of them and see, and tell me a good answer for I will tell you that when we redeveloped that three foot cage, such as the tongue no longer has to play the six foot tiger, all these go away. I have experience with every one of these type of cases. Yeah, yeah so, I think that's just, it's amazing. Like it's amazing how it all just, it all connects and there is a solution and I feel yeah. like, I feel like there's just not, there's a big group of us, but a not big enough group of us who really can address this problem or who are willing to admit, hey, maybe we didn't learn this, but now we can, and now we can move things forward. Kind of that, that flat earth thing you were talking about. Yeah, yes, yes. And thank goodness that there are a growing number of, you know, healthcare professionals, dentists, hygienists, assistants alike who are interested in getting this message out and educating the patients, kind of like lactation consultants for breastfeeding, right? Well, here's what happens with breastfeeding is that after the, the um, 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 weaning, that's where the ball gets dropped, right? So if I can, I'll uh, share another um, slide series with you. Go ahead. Uh, and, We'll talk about a little bit about children's dental facial development. Yes, please. So that this, this won't get to this won't get you know repeated. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again without expect with expecting different results. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Perfect. Yes. So we want to let me blow, just expand this as much as we can. All right, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, I'll go through some of this with you. I mean, this is a crime, right? This is negligence. You can't just say, well, mom, I have no cavities. I got a clean checkup. This is not a clean checkup. Mm -hmm. This is failure of the highest order, okay? Here's a five-year-old boy whose father says, well, the insurance didn't pay for it, I'm not doing it, all right? So, I mean, five years old, he's already obese. Five years old, he's already got a six foot tiger in a three foot cage. She's already brushed away his teeth. This kid is struggling. He cannot possibly be a good student and a good athlete. What's wild he, about that picture is he actually has lots of spaces between his teeth. <laughs> Most kids I see are, their teeth are even tighter than that at five years old. So that's, that's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but the kid could be easily, so easily rescued. It's just that the insurance doesn't cover this and the father says no. And mother is beside herself. Yeah. 
So, you know, we have kids who's posturally distorted because their jaws fail to thrive and therefore their teeth do not have enough bones. It's like the bus is too small and all the kids can't get off, right? And so how did that happen? Here's the conclusion, Stanford Sleep Center. Pediatric obstructive sleep apnea in non-obese children is a disorder of oral facial. The jaws fail to thrive. All right, we need to recognize that as dental and mouth professionals. All right, so how did this get this way? Well, this is where we had to look. <laughs> we had to look what happens when this kid is born, right? How do they end up that way? Or how do they end up looking like Julia Roberts or Katherine Hepburn, right? Beautiful jawlines, Rita Hayworth, all right? It turns out there's a way, and I found a Western A prices work. Uh, he documents that there are human beings in their native state, in their in harmony living in harmony with their locale, eating whole foods that they could have jaws that uh, white enough for all the teeth to line up straight. And the tongue has plenty of room to stay in the mouth without invading the airway, right? They don't have toothbrush. They don't have CVS. They don't have insurance cards. Never mind pediatricians who will be honest. And yeah, they don't have these health problems that we have. Right? What do they have? <laughs> they have white dental arches, okay? Mm -hmm. Their jaws thrive instead of fail to thrive. Okay, and because of that, everything in their body's postural chain from the head down works. Because that's one thing I learned from Dr. Singh. We grow from the head down. Every newborn could not hold up its head to feed. But with time, we could sit up, grasp things, put it in their mouths. <laughs> Guess what? That's how you grow more. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when your jaw don't grow well, the rest of your body will pay a price. All the way down to pelvic opening and difficult childbirth. So I can look at somebody's palate and I can pretty much tell they're gonna have childbirth difficulty. Wow. Is it true that if you're tongue tied, you're more likely to have difficult labor? Yes. Um, I suspect there is a reasonable connection to that, although I don't have any research to show for it. Mm -hmm. I also can tell you that anytime you see malocclusion, you can suspect tongue tie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's suspect, okay? It's, it's assumed guilty until proven otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Anecdotally, I had, so I got my tongue tie released when I was 17 weeks pregnant here. And uh, I had I had a, a pretty fairly smooth delivery, no tearing, everything went really well. So I have no idea if they're connected. <laughs> oh, this this is connected to the chest fascia. So when I was doing a hospital residency uh, after I got out of dental school, they told me the oral surgeon told me when you reflect a lingual flap. Don't peel that past the attached um, um, gingiva because if you peel that past that, you can drop a quarter all the way down to the pericardium. Well, right? it's loose connective tissue. That's crazy. From the lingual flap all the way down to your mediastinum. Okay. So, that means the fascial connection is that when you release this here, the patient can feel the whole chest release. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is the pelvis connected to the chest? I think the safe answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, the big problem is not with breastfeeding. The big problem, as I said earlier, is uh, weaning. Mother's milk is the best food for the newborn. Well, what happens when the babies are done with breastfeeding? What do you give them? 
last one is really, really critical and I highly recommend this book. Mm -hmm. If you want to avoid uh, your child ending up being the 92% that has malocclusion, I think this number is probably higher now, probably 98 now. <laughs> but um, how do you feed them uh, at this age is really important. This is my granddaughter. Oh, yes, beauty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. At seven, eight months old, this is what they want to do. They want yeah. to munch. You munch, eat munch. food like that, huh? Everything you eat food like that. Out. Okay. You want to, them to work their jaw. They naturally are itchy, right? You want them to work their jaw to grow their facial bones because it's a full by the muscle functions in everyday physiological functions that um, makes uh, for beautiful faces. Okay. So, you know, here is a six-year-old. Look at the head tilt. The head is not mounted on the neck correctly. You can see the posture. You can see how the shirt hangs. And guess what? There is a crossbite. So don't tell me that this crossbite does not have any influence. Mm -hmm. on the rest of our body. It is this major influence on what you see here. And Dr. Liao, what are your sign, your ABCs again? Alignment, breathing, circulation before dentistry, dummy. The second D's were emphasis. So, you know, I see enough adult cases that I now know what to bring those lessons back from adult sufferings to apply back to kids and say, what must we make happen in the growing child, okay? So I wanna show you this case here. This is a 60 year old man who is medically diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. So for 50 years of his life, we can say, no dentist ever picked out that he's got a six foot tiger in that sleep foot cage. No one ever saw that he's got not only a ligament for a tongue tie, he's got a whole sheet, a whole band, okay, for um, um, tongue fascia. How do I know? Because the tongue cups when you try to have him extend it out. Something is pulling it underneath and it is this whole thing and this whole thing. And by the way, when you look at this purple swollen vein, this patient has got digestion problems. Oh, interesting. So, I always uh, learn such interesting pearl. things from you, Dr. Liao. <laughs> this is a pearl from Chinese medicine. They use tongue diagnosis. And I'm not a, a TCM practitioner, but I know when I see this tongue that the patient has got liver and digestion problems. Mm. So yeah. and this patient uh, has a high BMI. All right. So, you know, I look at these cases enough and I know what must happen in a child to avoid this thing from repeating itself in the next generation. Okay. So that little girl who's got a twisted uh, body, you know, it's because of this uh, malocclusion. And once we um, took her um, palate from here to here with a very classical uh, rapid palatal expander, her maxilla went from this to this. Mm -hmm. And now the rest of her life, she doesn't have to worry about pain or pelvic problem anymore. Okay. So the, the clues that we need to be looking for in young people okay, is um, narrow nostrils and nostril asymmetry, and even eyes, lip incompetence, the lack of a lip seal, and therefore they will end up with chap lips. That means they're not breathing through their, through their nose. If the nose uh, is not taking in air, one, the kid will be more anxious, hyper, and two, the maxilla will not grow. Mm -hmm. And then the mandible will become retreated. And not only that, <laughs> the face will grow long and narrow. All because of stuffy mouth. So, we need to be on the lookout for that if we want a good dental facial development. All right. So obviously teeth grinding is not a good thing. Kids should not snore. 
Right. Yeah. yeah so many right. times we hear pediatric dentists say, oh, it's, you know, it's just a phase of snoring or, oh, they'll grow out of the teeth grinding. Right. They don't they'll, grow out of it. they'll grow out of it. <laughs> you want a pet kid to grow well. Yeah. You need to pay attention to that. So, you know, you mothers are on the forefront of this. Low-level environmental pollutants may slow fetal growth. I don't know about you. I don't want my granddaughter's head to grow slow. I want it to grow to its full genetic potential. Okay. So DDT, PCBs will affect fetal growth. And core blood is full of environmental toxins. Okay, they took 10 babies are born uh, in two months in 2004, and they found almost 300 industrial chemicals and pollutants in the poor blood. 180 of them are cancer causing in humans or animals. And where do they come from? Pesticides, coal residues, gasoline, garbage, chlorofluoro chemicals used in fast food packaging, clothing, textile, and Teflon. Like all the anti-retardants, mm -hmm. plant retardants, yeah, is in the core blood. The new car smell, it's in the core blood. Makes me want to live in a bubble <laughs> and like never leave my house and <laughs> grow true. my own food and make, make my us. own clothes. <laughs> this is, and this is the world that we're in, okay? Uh, plastic, the, the, the ocean, the earth cannot digest plastic. Okay, so the fish are loaded with tiny plastic particles now. Mm -hmm. And so when you eat food, you are ingesting plastic. Okay, and that's not all. <laughs> International General Gynecology Obstetricians, they say that documented the links between prenatal exposure to environmental chemicals and adverse health consequences span the life course and include impacts on fertility, pregnancy, neurodevelopment, and cancer. Wow. Okay. That's so crazy. We out, I mean, we're, we are at risk of going extinct because everyone who was born is now compromised by the, not only climate change, but the environmental pollution. The, the government regulators cannot possibly keep that up. Wow. There are pharmaceuticals in your tap water and the restaurants. Eating out may be entertaining, may be fun, but definitely it's not healthy because the water, you can assume it's not filtered. It comes straight out of the tap. Okay. So everybody else's birth control pill, Prozac, um, Viagra, um, Zoloft, Wellbutrin, they're all in there. Mm. And they're all in there, okay? And here's how I know. I did a little experiment in my own house. I bought an over-the-counter filter unit like this for $150. Here's what the filter looks like when it's clean. Six months later, <laughs> the, the, the filter looks like this. Well, if I didn't use that filter, I would have taken it, my liver would have had to deal with all of this. Okay. Wow. This is, pile, this is a pile of snow that should be snow white. This is one week out in the air last winter. Here's the sidewalk. Here's the cement wall. Look <laughs> at this color. Mm -hmm. Shocking. That's what our nose and our lungs have to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's what our liver has to detox. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we haven't talked about antibiotics and the meat and the chickens that we got. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a grading system that they use. It's called a beef scoreboard. Except for Chipotle and Panera, everybody else is C or F. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's crazy. It's so much like not only just environmental, right? So it's the environmental, it's what we eat. It's the, uh, the genetics of how we're born and everything that's really put together. So, um, yeah. you know, Dr. Liao, so, you know, people, we get all this information, we get all this knowledge, we learn all this stuff. Um, sometimes as patients, we get overwhelmed, right? We're like, oh my gosh, okay, we have to like start over. What do we do? So what are some you things- You have to cook at home. You mm -hmm. have to cook at home. You cannot, you cannot possibly live on this food. You mm -hmm. cannot live, possibly eat food that are cooked with tap water. Um, and the only way you can control, I like it or not, is you need to learn how to prepare food in your own kitchen as a personal wellness necessity. Just like learning how to brush and floss is necessary to keep your teeth and gums. You want to eat healthy, you got to control what goes into your mouth. Mm -hmm. And if you eat the way uh, I just showed you a small smattering of, you can be in big trouble long term. And that's how most Americans end up being susceptible to COVID because they have a lot of internal inflammation already. Mm. Yeah. I always learn so much from you. Um, I remember once I saw you speak and you were talking about, about how humans weren't meant to drink milk, like from cows. Yeah, yeah from yeah, cows. Yeah. And so, um, but I was like, eh, I'm fine. My stomach doesn't hurt but I hadn't had dairy for a while and I had it the other day and all day long, I could not stop clearing my throat. And I had so much congestion that day with no allergies. So you always teach me so much about nutrition and full body health, like getting your jaws right, getting your alignment of your body centered with either Atlas Axis, chiropractic, osteopath, PT, whatever. This, this is the whole health approach. And the mouth is really the centerpiece in whole health because, you know, that's how the outer environment goes into our internal environment, which is what drives our health, right? All the gut health, all the gut microbiome. Now we know we have a gut brain access, all right? We're just starting to discover all these interconnections. And that is really what matters. Uh, the, the, the days of the dentist doing, you know, cavities uh, um, and after cavities is gone. Uh, the future of dentistry is in, believe it or not, whole health, whole body health and wellness. And the mouth caveat that right. I, I wish that it was gone. We'd have to keep pushing them and educate yeah. them. And you need to yeah. keep pushing and teaching them and right. get their head right. out. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Keep us, keep oh. us moving forward. So, yep. well, Dr. Liao, we are at about an hour and it's been so great to pick your brain right. oh. and to chat with you. And I mean, obviously we probably could sit here for another three hours, but I don't know if Izzy could hang. So um, <laughs> do you have any kind of parting thoughts, advice, anything for like a nugget for us to take home? Yeah, um, I think that... Um, the most important thing is uh, um, one, watch the kid that they have lip seal, mm -hmm. that they have sw correct swallowing, that they don't have nasal congestion. And that has everything to do with what you feed them. So humans are not meant just a little um, edit on the um, point you made earlier to me. Humans are not meant to drink store-bought, homogenized, pasteurized milk. Humans can absolutely drink cow's milk straight out of the tits. I was in Costa Rica. I got to squeeze the tits and drink the milk still piping hot, and it was delicious. <laughs> and I had no symptoms afterwards, okay? That's fresh, all right? But not pasteurized, homogenized milk from the store. So you have to watch what you eat. And I listed all of the environmental toxins and how mm -hmm. they eat uh, in my new book. It's called Licensed to Thrive. Mm. These are conversations that I have every day with my patients about stuffy nose, about snoring, about um, uh, swollen tongues, 
about adrenal exhaustions, about neck, shoulder, and back pain. So um, one pearl is that you got to learn how to cook for yourself. And there's a website now called Cook to Thrive, number two, cooktothrive.com. I'll put that in the chat box. Okay, great. Yeah. And we'll link that in the description as well, as well as links okay. to your books. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. that. And uh, I'm happy that uh, you enjoyed this. And anytime yes. I can- Thank you so you, much. You know, what you're doing, I'm happy to support you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Dr. Leo. We appreciate it. We'll link everything. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations on your new Thank book. You. I've yes. read your other ones. They're fantastic. Yeah. Bye. You need to read. Take care. <laughs> yeah. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.